penalty to get out of here and work on that Magnus Robot Fighter Valiant video. Yay, yeah, you! Yeah. All right, done at last. Now I can set the world's ass on fire with my love of Valiant books. Yay, yeah, you! Yeah. Man, oh man, finally the day off. I'm going to work on that Riggs Valiant maybe right after the ball game. There's a new rook, and I want to see what he's made of. Now, what was I supposed to be doing? I guess I'll see if the game's on. There you go. Austin Davis approaches the plate. Ah. Davis is a hot new rookie prospect out of... Jamestown, Tennessee. He's currently batting 222 for six home runs. Look at his three months of Major League Ball. Davis approaches the plate, knocking the dirt off of his feet. He, right. he takes his rather unorthodox stance, cocking the bat well above his head, Squat, squatting down much lower than anyone in the Major League. So, and Davis is in living class slump. They couch that to miss it, the home cooking of barbecue meatball dinners. They only have Angus McBrown on the mound with an ERA of 222 within his seven months pitching big ball. Angus winds up and throws the pitch. And it's a beat for Dustin Davis. Go, 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 go! Out of the Wisconsin no. triple play, Dustin Davis oh. runs. Well, great shame of the ball club. My word. Thank God there's a new Riggs Valiant tonight. Oh, so five on your score? That's what I'm supposed to be doing. That's a robot fighter, so maybe that will redeem mankind after what that Dustin Davis done here. Major League Baseball may never be the same. Boy. The Riggs Valiant and Magnus are for your approval. Imagine a future landscape of 4001. Although a gold key property since 1963, Jimmy Shoots proved he could use the dude in 
for a time, it was good. favorite Magnus Robot Fighter story. So, <clears throat> okay. Now, the issue opens in the bubble house, <laughs> and we have deep in the Antarctic Ocean, okay? Well under, well under the surface of the water is the bubble house, and it's March 21st, 3992, and a 16-year-old Magnus is training. Now, this is a good 10 years before he would become the guardian of North Am, and in the foreground, we get a look at A1. Now, A1 uh, he monitors Magnus as a trainer, but most importantly, he's Magnus's parent figure, both mother and father, and 1A, <laughs> I might have said A1 like the steak sauce, maybe that's just because it's breakfast time, but 1A is a little deficient, although he is 400 years of free will, he still, as his dialogue would suggest, speaks relatively robotic, although he is capable of independent thought and of being a good role model <laughs> for Magnus. So Magnus is training, and he's getting his butt handed to him, and... <laughs> 1A is trying to encourage him through the training, but Magnus he just doesn't want to train anymore that day. You can see in the background there in a dome, you see deep underwater animals. So, <laughs> 1A makes note of saying, you're off balance, you know, you're leaning too far forward in, in his robotic voice. And finally, you know, Magnus, he gets knocked down. Uh, <clears throat> so 1A is trying to counsel him, trying to school him on what he did wrong, but Magnus has had it, he doesn't want any more training, and he storms off. Okay, he bells on his training session, and 1A, <laughs> you know, he doesn't really know how to manage this blossoming, prepubescent, uh, Magnus, so he gets on the horn and he calls Kimmy and other uh, intelligence for advice. You know, Magnus is to be the protector of Japan uh, or North Am, and you know, grandmother is going to be depending on him, so 1A wants some wisdom. So, through their call, Kimmy suggests that uh, Magnus needs to have some fun. He needs to see other humans. He needs to interact with other boys. He needs to meet some girls. And he needs a vacation. That is what is in order. So... One A goes to Magnus's room and... He admits that he, he missed seeing this in Magnus, that, you know, he needs to get out. And what they're going to do is they're going to go on this vacation, and they're going to go allow Magnus to spread his, <laughs> spread his wings a little bit. Uh, however, they cannot go to North Am as it isn't safe for free wills like 1A, so they're going to go to Mars, basically. And we see them uh, <clears throat> leaving in the submarine on the, the top right there, and then Magnus uh, checking in. 
and we learn from 1A that he's planted a device on Magnus's brain that will allow Magnus to receive robot-to-robot -robot communications and basically translate them so Magnus will be able to hear the thoughts of robots interacting sort of in their, their silent communication. <laughs> so another important note is that 1A explains to Magnus that you have to uh, dress me as a servant Rob. So you can't, <laughs> you can't let them know that I'm your folks. So he, he also says, you know, you have to, you have to treat me in a diminutive manner. And Magnus, jokingly, he's okay with that because he's still a little flustered at 1A for all the, the hours of training. And it's also been brought to 1A's attention during the check-in that he cannot take a seat with Magnus. He cannot be anywhere near the lobby. He has to go and he has to be checked in as travel freight. And 1A is bummed, you know. <laughs> it's, it's a real step down for him because he's used to being basically equals with mankind. And, you know, he, he wants to continue that. So for him, it's, um, uh, it's very humiliating. And he thought Magnus should have said something, but Magnus, you know, he's got his mind on other things right now. And namely, uh, in the lobby, uh, Magnus is communicating with 1A, um, you know, through that method that they discuss, basically, almost a form of, you know, telepathy, really. And we see a couple of girls in the lobby, and they're saying, uh, wow, you know, Mag this, this boy, he over there, he's so cute, but he looks so shy. And <laughs> the, um, the most overzealous of the three, she starts to approach, and Magnus, you know, he says to, um, to 1A, hey, these girls, um, are watching me, and one is approaching, and, and all of her friends are watching. And 1A says, uh, uh, perhaps she wants to mate. And Magnus is, is too shy to reciprocate in the least. And the one that approached Magnus, uh, she goes back to the others, and they snicker, and um, Magnus blushes, and is, you know, <laughs> his, his first interaction he bombed, <laughs> but, hey, you know, he, he explains it to 1A that, you know what, um, uh, I couldn't even talk, but it made me feel sort of funny in a good way, so it's a step in the right direction, um, <clears throat> uh, the craft is landed, and they're basically uh, in the terminal, and uh, Magnus is headed to retrieve his luggage and <laughs> to get uh, 1A um, collected out of freight pickup. And over in the bottom left, he notices the governor's daughter, and she looked at him, and, um, oh, <laughs> you know, he fell so hard, you know, just one look, he... He sees her, and just like that, suddenly her escort robs are neutralized, and uh, she's getting nabbed by enemy robs. Um, we we learn from the robs speaking to the governor's daughter that they're <laughs> they're grabbing her as a hostage. Uh, you see them talking to her on the top right. And they're basically taking her to help them in their negotiations. Um, <laughs> Magnus, he springs into action. And he, um, he can hear the robots communicating with each other, which he uses as an edge. And he overcomes them just long enough to um, take the girl by the arm and run from the robs. 
and so they're escaping and she's reluctant she doesn't know that he's trying to help her she as far as she knows she's still being kidnapped she's scared um, <laughs> Magnus uh, <laughs> he guides the girl away from the killer robs and 1A is, is talking to him he's saying um, to head to the largest stone and when he says it is well it's a simulated park where he'd have the best chance of protecting the girl um, <clears throat> so Magnus explains to the girl that she's being pursued by uh, renegade robots mankind's enemy and she starts to calm down a little bit her her father is the governor he actually created this dome and it's unlike anything Magnus has seen it's very serene very beautiful sure you just have to upgrade yourself humans and Biomechanics are one. Yeah, it's, it's, what does this all do for you? What can you do with these? I can burn holes through. I've got laser eyes, man. What else can you do? I can read minds, and now man. I'm more curious. I'm so curious about knowledge and obtaining information. Yeah, you're telling me about the reading minds. You're not convincing me. I've got laser eyes, and I know what you're thinking because there's no surprise. Christmas lights are blinking. After you know a little bit of inter introducing himself, um, the girl she sees a gardener Rob named Twenty Four, and she runs up and she says to the Rob Twenty Four, her name is Deidre Hill, and to inform Central, and just like that, before she can even bat a lash, Magnus destroys Twenty Four takes its head clean off, and he says to Deidre, um, uh, <clears throat> 24, his message wouldn't make it to Central. It's, it's already been intercepted by the Renegade Robs, and they're on their way. Uh, 1A informs them, you know, you've, you've been spotted. So Magnus insists that, um, uh, he and Deidre, they be quiet uh, and continue to lay low. The pole robs, those are those are the robs that would assist them. They have yet to launch their posse. Um, so one of the renegade robs sees Magnus's blood on the floor next to twenty four. And he knows that this boy is something special. And they send a sniffer rob after Magnus and Deeds. It's, it's looking bad. Uh, over in collections for the freight, uh, a diplomat sees <laughs> 1A all by himself. And, you know, he says... To identify yourself, but one A is not going to say anything. He's um, he's acting like he's on standby. So <laughs> um, one A is stuck at freight claim, and he can't even doesn't even want to move. He's just kind of trying to guide Magnus through this, but he's kind of in hot water all by himself. Uh, so. Back at the the big dome, um, <laughs> the kids uh, they just get flushed by the sniffer bot, you know, and they make a run for it. But Deidre says, "Hey, we're we're running the wrong way," <laughs> you know. She she's been here before and she knows that they are in fact headed for a cliff. <sighs> yeah. And even in his best efforts, Magnus has led them astray. <laughs> but um, the Robs ultimately are attacking. Uh, the Snifferbot is coming at him. 
Uh, Magnus is able to pull off a little matador move and send the sniffer rob into the water. Um, but the rest of the renegade robs are on their way. And they grab the girl and knock Magnus out. And he's unconscious. <sighs> Cut to two days later. Um, two days later, Magnus is safe. He's in a hospital bed, and Deidre is at his side, and the diplomat who was asking about 1A actually is the governor, that's her father, and it turns out the poor Robs got there just in time, thanks to Magnus um, delaying everything, he rescued Deidre, and, you know, even though, you know, eventually he did get uh, overcome, he did a good thing. Um, and guess what? Um, well, Deidre wants to give him a kiss. But, no time. <laughs> no time. 1A is in trouble. No time for a kiss. Um, 1A is to be dismantled. <laughs> um, he was never claimed, and a bot that is not claimed must be destroyed. And Magnus does the right thing. He bolts out of there, and he's running. And One A is about to be mowed down because he One A. Ultimately, he just decides to book. <laughs> it just gets too hot, and um, uh, Magnus intervenes, and uh, they recognize him. You know, this is the hero that saved the governor's daughter. And, you know, Magnus says, hey, he's a good little Rob. Um, please, you know, we'll be on our way. And ultimately, 1A gets a pass. Um, wow, that kind of turns out to be Magnus's his whole um, adventure. Because, <clears throat> you know, it's basically the same group of girls that he had no confidence uh, at the beginning of the story, they're saying, hey, did you, did you do all that? Did you save the governor's sister? And <laughs> they want to know, um, wow, uh, Deidre, I bet she's a good kisser. And, um, you know, all, all the other girls, they want to <laughs> they want to test Magnus out. But he says, you know, he's real casual and nonchalant about it now because he's been there. And... Back to training, back at the bubble house, and, you know, Magnus has all this uh, fervor, and he's just destroyed the training bot, and 1A is good, and, you know, Magnus is, you know, he's becoming a man, and he's like, you know what, um, uh, yeah, man, more vacation, <laughs> so... That is Magnus 20. Well, you know, Magnus Robot Fighters never called me at 3.30 in the morning to complain that the truck broke down. Uh, second, you know, no comic fan has ever thrown up on me at a comic book show, although it happened plenty of times at rock and roll shows. Um, third, the characters will really are able to be molded. I, I can't tell you how many times I did rock and roll shows and manage bands where I would say, this is a terrific idea for you. And they would say, we're just not going to do it. We don't want to. Whereas Magnus has never told me that. Mag Magnus, of course, is pure science fiction and action adventure. So Magnus and Ryan, the Future Force, would appeal to, again, science fiction readers, I believe. 